Okay, so Pi News episode 97. First up, we have a story from the official Raspberry Pi site. Sustainable solutions with Raspberry Pi, how intrusive reflow soldering boosted our efficiency and cut our carbon footprint. So they've managed to reduce product returns by half and cut manufacturing time by 15%. And that's eliminated 43 tonnes of CO2 per year. And this is in the way that they solder their computers. And they've actually been doing this for a while because I've got Pi 5s like this. So this is a Pi 5 and you can see the GPIO pins are much shallower than on the Pi 4. And so here's my Pi 4 and you can see on the GPIO pins and some other components the solder really sticks up. Whereas on my Pi 5 you can see it's very flush. There's a, a three and a half inch wave share screen on there at the moment. That's what that board is. Work in progress inventory was eliminated entirely as there's no longer any break in the production line. All the way from bare boards coming into the factory to finished Raspberry Pi computers being packaged into boxes. And removing a set of machinery, the selective solder bath from the production line reduced the CO2 output. So this reflow soldering is cutting the energy usage and definitely better for the environment. There is a video of it here. I like videos like this. Let's go full screen. Has video start working in Chrome again in uh, KDE? Well, let's use Firefox then. Wait for it. See it all melting down and going nice and flat. And then going solid. And there's a bit more write up about it in here. I'll link it in the description. Yeah, this was the YouTube fix. So, what was it back along? So in the video, I uninstalled Chromium and installed a newer version with Pi Apps, and that worked for me. But also you can do it by disabling hardware acceleration in Chrome settings, but that does affect the performance somewhat. We had a new product release from Raspberry Pi. It was this 45 watt USB-C power supply. So they're selling it for $15, pretty reasonable really. And this is their most powerful power supply so far. I mean, on a Raspberry Pi 5, uh, the, the weird thing about it was that it used 5 volt, 5 amp, and most power supplies don't go up to that. But this supports 5 volt, 5 amp, but it also supports higher voltage and higher wattage as well. So it's not going to supply more than 5 amps to a Raspberry Pi 5, unless you're using it through some separate board to power the Pi 5. So Pi 4 had a 15.3 watt, Pi 5 had a 27 watt, and I use both of those on a regular basis. I really just trust them as a, as a power supply, a well-made power supply. And they've lengthened the cable to 1.5 meter, was 1.2. And so this also works at 20 volt, 2.25 amp. This is better. 5.1 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt, 15 volt, 20 volt. And it's power delivery compliant. And they do variations for different countries. Now I'm not going to put a link to this in, but you can search for it yourself on Internet Archive. It's a Windows 95 image for Dospian. Now, I haven't tried it yet, but uh, a while back, in fact, if we go to Firefox because I still haven't applied that YouTube fix, Dospian. So on the Raspberry Pi 4, I managed to install, I think, Windows 95. Yeah, Windows 95 and played some games and really liked it. And this was also Dospian using the DOS mode, so not within Windows. And I've done loads of videos on, on other ways of installing 98 and 95 and so on. But it wasn't that easy. And the reason I didn't do a video at the time is because I had so many failed attempts. I didn't quite know what had worked. So this looks like a ready-made image that you can use. So I'm not linking to it because I wouldn't think that Microsoft would allow it. Now this isn't really Raspberry Pi, but as the Raspberry Pi mostly runs on Linux... I thought it was worth putting in. So no snap or flat pack. Linux distros agreed to have only one universal packaging. It sounds like a good thing to, to not have to think about where you're downloading your apps and games and getting the latest ones, if that's what it means. Could be really good, but we'll see. Tom's hardware. So this Raspberry Pi Zero camera instantly prints photos using thermal paper. Always like things like this on the Pi. So I guess this is 3D printed. I don't know, it looks really good. Develop a space rower on Reddit. Raspberry Pi powered camera, creates physical photos on the spot. I come from the old Kodak instant days. Made from the ground up from scratch. Raspberry Pi Zero. Take a photo, press the green button. You've got an adjustment for brightness. Long press the green button to print the photo. Thermal printer. I used to have a friend who had one of those for their spectrum. Prints on sticker paper. Yeah, the hardware from scratch. This was done digitally so it could be 3D printed. The case was printed in PLA. There's also a lens protector. 
Oh, and there's some nice pictures inside. Not sure what these little wiry copper bits are. 240 by 240, 1200 milliamp hour battery. And you can find the 3D print files on printables and it's on Reddit as well. So there's the printables file. I can't see a video though. And there's some more pictures here. There's the paper. And it looks like it's got a magnet, always like magnets. Well, I've got a few videos now. I'm gonna to have to disable the uh, accelerator. What was it? Settings and system. Yeah, let's turn that off. At least it will play. Let's close it down. So these are super cool. And this is, is it Miguelito Chaparito? Has made these very cool looking plasma lighters. I won't play all of it, uh, but you can have a look on Raspberry Pi and DIY projects on Facebook, but they just look amazing. Yeah, and there's some more sort of finished articles here. It just looks really impressive. And on this video, it takes the uh, sort of prongs off. So it unscrews them here. I love it. Just looks really dangerous though. Oh, and although it's on the Raspberry Pi, uh, it does say, uh, these pictures clearly show there's no Raspberry Pi in there, or are you passively aggressively asking why it's in the group? Okay, well it's cool anyway. And I'm guessing this one has a Raspberry Pi in it. So you can see this is a mini monitor, little Panasonic style monitor. There's some nice pictures here. So we've got the Pi 4 that must be because of the uh, ethernet being on that side. A smart CRT TV. Oh, it's obviously not a CRT monitor in there because there's not enough depth, but it looks like one. We also had this from Michael Clements who makes some amazing Raspberry Pi 3D printed cases. So this is a 3D printed modular 10 inch rack called Lab Racks and it can house seven pies. And if we have a look at some of the pictures, one of the nice little details, these are all fans down here, the little LED fans, which are cool. You can see there's some ethernet connections, all the pies all joined up, some handles. These fans are really nice. Um, I think it's 52 pie make them. They're just very quiet and they look cool because they've got LED on them as well. Yeah, very, very nice. And the question was asked, what do you use all the Raspberry Pis for? A few different uses for them, flight aware, flight tracker, ad blocker, media server, and file data server. And we had this story from Tom's Hardware. Raspberry Pi Pico flight stick randomly mashes buttons for fighting game combos. Now I remember playing against a friend of ours years ago, I think it was Tekken, and he didn't look at his controller. It was on PlayStation 1 literally just hammered the buttons and we were playing winner stays on couldn't get him off uh, and so <laughs> if you want to win against everybody this could be your controller of choice wooden flight stick this pico flight stick creation put together by maker and developer goblin han yekan adds a new dynamic to the classic flight stick by adding a few extra buttons and there's a video link there if you're interested this was very professionally done on tiktok the perfect digital dash for under 200 dollars using these so Raspberry Pi 5, and it's an older Honda, and they've added a digital dash, and the video covers all sorts of details of various different 3D printed parts. And if you're into it, it looks like they've done other things uh, with this as well, so more improvements as time has gone on. So this one from XDA Developers, someone made a LiDAR scanner with a Raspberry Pi, and it looks awesome. Uses a Raspberry Pi for LiDAR mapping. LiDAR scans the surroundings by firing lasers to create a 3D model. Pi 4 camera, motors, and LiDAR kit are needed for the project. Looks like there's quite a lot going on in there. And more details if you're interested in doing something like that. Hackster.io had this story about a Micro Mac Raspberry Pi Pico. Emulate the original Macintosh for around $20 or less. And it's got a VGA connector on here, a little micro USB, and obviously the interface between the board. And here it is in operation. And there's a video link there as well. Yeah, it looks impressive. We had a Sony Watchman revived with a Pi 3, so it's got like a magnification element to it. A CRT might not seem like the obvious choice for a pocket-friendly display, but Sony had the technology down in the 1980s. I don't remember these. With Sony Watchman for 1985 with a composite input and Raspberry Pi 3B+, wireless keyboard and mouse, custom painted wireless keyboard and trackpad, and a somewhat blurry display. <laughs> This is very much like the little trackpad and keyboard that I use on my uh, mini PC in the lounge for gaming. Not to play games, to launch them. Command and Conquer has appeared on the Pico 2. Now this is impressive. I remember my PC didn't run it well back in the day when it first came out. So this to be running on a Pico 2, it's also a great game. I spent hours and hours. I got repetitive strain injury from, I'm not sure if it was the original or if it was Red Alert. 
but I played both of them a lot and even bought one of those trackball mice to play it, although I didn't stick with it. So I documented the process, getting the 1996 game up and running, series of Mastodon posts, adds 8 meg of PS RAM, bumps the onboard flash to 16 megabytes. Yeah, not sure I'd want to play it on such a small display, but I'm impressed. From XDA, this looked nice. This gorgeous Raspberry Pi e-ink project shows what's playing on Spotify. Color e-ink display. So Raspberry Pi Zero 2W and a Pi Moroni inky impression e-ink display. So they said that the black and white displays update a lot quicker. It is quite slow to update, but it's an unusual piece of kit. Yeah, very nice. More TikTok, uh, this on Concept Bytes. I believe this is a Raspberry Pi. What you are seeing is a miniature record player that actually runs Spotify. And yeah, it actually works. Raspberry Pi on the back. I won't show all of it. Again, I'll link to the video, but yeah, it looks really, really nice. Okay, so hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.